Thanks everyone. Um, resilience. I suppose we've heard plenty of stories there tonight from plenty of good speakers about resilience and about their stories on resilience. Um, we heard some, some good funny ones, some good jokes. The best we heard was Aaron saying he was only 40 right now. <laughs> so uh, usually I follow Vivian and our talks are identical. So it's kind of different tonight whenever I decided not to prepare. Apart from looking and checking out to see what resilience actually meant. And whenever I looked it up, it said the ability to bounce back from adversity. And whenever I started really thinking about that and looking at it, the one word that really struck me was ability. Because we all have loads of different abilities that we don't really use. With the ability to change our lives for the better. We have the ability to be happier. We have the ability to make more money if we want. We have the ability to work less hours if we want. You can combine that. You can work less hours and have more money. I'll talk to you more about that later on. <coughs> then I started thinking about different abilities that I had and that I used them properly. And just like most other people probably didn't. I think back to school times. I had the ability to do better in school, to become more, to be more. Just like loads of other people, loads of people in here, I could have done so much more with my life. When you think about the resilience of the people of this city, the people of our country, the resilience was shown right throughout the history of the troubles. Um, there was no one more resilient that I can think of than the manager of this hotel, <coughs> who's now an adopted dairy man. And in his first couple of weeks in dairy, as a manager in here, there was a bomb put at reception and blew up the hotel. Now Neil had to get everything together within a couple of days to get the hotel up and running again for the dairy marathon, which was really a big thing for the town. Of course he did it, because that's just the type of person he is. And you can see how he's transformed this hotel. If anyone is from Derry or has visited Derry recently or the past lot of years, you can see the difference Neil's made here. But that's just what the people of, of Ireland and the people of Northern Ireland do. And when I started thinking about possible uh, possible opportunities I may have missed out on. I think back again to school and I think, why did I not do better? Did I not have the resilience? Did I not have the ability to do better? All I wanted from school was just to finish up and get out and work. My father owned his own business I thought he was fairly successful. And all I wanted to do was go out and carry bags of coal. 10 stone bags of coal, there's only nine and a half stone. Couldn't get the 10 stone. I still can't get the 10 stone, but I'm going the wrong side of it now. That's all I wanted to do. I think, was I lazy? Possibly. Was I stupid? Definitely not. So, why did I do that? Why did I limit my options? And I think it was because I lacked something. I lacked the drive, the vision. I didn't have what it took at that time because I hadn't been educated in it. I didn't know where I wanted to be. I wanted to be with, I wanted to be with my father um, for a couple of reasons. He was a man who saved my life twice. He was going to save my life three times, but he was dead the third time. He saved my life whenever I was three, when I was seriously ill in the hospital. <coughs> and um, Brian talked about Catholics and the way Catholics won. Well, whenever you're about to check out as a Catholic, they, they give you the last rites and they anoint you. And I was anointed. The only people that I could see were doctors and nurses that were going up. Then the priest came in, anointed me, and he was followed by my mother and father. And my mother said her goodbyes as well. So everyone had given up on me except the father. 
he knelt down beside me and he held my hand and he told me that he knew that I could make it. So only for him, I probably would have just checked out. Probably would have died. And then at the age of, age of six, um, we were walking along a beach and uh, holding his hand and I slipped under the water <coughs> and it took him a while to find me. And when he eventually found me, a long, long curl of hair and he pulled me out from the hair. And he had to revive me, he had to give me the kiss of life, pump my chest, and bring me back to life. From then I was 18, didn't get my hair cut. <laughs> you see, it's still me. So I was really close to my father. And whenever I left school and was done the family business, for me that's all I really wanted. I didn't really want anything else. I didn't see myself as being better than that. Um, I was in the, the, the business with him for two years whenever he took sick. He had a stroke, and then we found out that he had a heart disease. Um, within a short period of time, he died, and I was totally devastated, lost, felt empty. Now at that time, I was married, two daughters, sitting in the corner. But it didn't feel as if that was enough for me. I wanted the pain to end. I didn't really want to die. I just wanted the pain to end. So I planned my own suicide. And that was the third time that my father saved my life. Because whenever I went to commit suicide, I had everything planned right down to the last detail. And whenever I went to do it, I could see his face in front of me and how disappointed he would have been in me. And that for me was enough. So at that moment in time, I decided I needed to do something. I needed to turn my life around. And it's not easy whenever you can't admit that you're in a dark place. My wife stood by me, she helped me. And only four or probably wouldn't be here either. But I decided then that I needed to do something. I needed to find a way forward. And men being men, especially then in the mid 90s, and even still today, men don't talk enough. Men keep everything to themselves. And it's conditioning. We've been conditioned that way from a very, very young age. But boys don't cry. Man up. Don't talk about your problems. That's bullshit. So all that does is cause more problems. But I didn't go to the doctor. I wasn't officially diagnosed. I know what, what it was and know what was wrong. I didn't need a doctor to tell me. But I should have went and I should have got his help. But to move myself forward, I decided to start looking into personal development. Started reading books like The Secret. Started reading other personal development books. And they were all great. They were all brilliant and really worked at the time. But whenever I stopped reading them, I went to slide again. And let me think two things. Firstly, it wasn't a quick fix that I needed. It was a whole new lifestyle. And secondly, personal development doesn't work. I'm a big advocate of the secret. I'm a big advocate of positive thinking. But I'm telling you, it doesn't work. And you'll find that shocking, especially whenever you think, I'm making a living from it now, and a damn good living at that. And I'll explain shortly what I mean by it doesn't work. So on my journey, going through the personal development, I was able to turn my life around and start being able to see where I wanted to be who I wanted to be, what I wanted to do. There was a clear vision in my mind. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. It was like getting into the car and putting on the sat nav. You stick on your destination. You think, that's great. That'll take me to where I want to be. My internal sat nav wasn't really working that way. Because although I knew where I wanted to be, who I wanted to be, what I wanted to do, 
something missing. Something from my sat nav that was missing. The sat nav needs a lot of information. It needs to know where you want to go, but it also needs to know where you are right now. And I didn't really know. I knew I was in a really low point, the lowest point of my life. But I didn't really know what was going on inside. So I started to educate myself more on the mind. Find out why I was thinking the way I was thinking. Why were things not changing? I knew where I wanted to be. I knew that as long as I could start taking steps there, it would all change. But until I realized in every part of my life, exactly where I was, nothing was going to change. So I had to assess every area of my life. Once I'd done that, and I started taking the first step, everything changed. Because once you know where you are, and where you want to be, you start making a change. Was that enough to create the whole change that I wanted? No, of course it wasn't. But it was enough to start. Because whenever you start, you can only see so far. Whenever you can see that far, go as far as you can. Do what you can. When you get there, you'll see further. You'll be able to move further and do more things. And that's what I did. I then went and I formally trained in NLP, Master Practitioner, Master Coach, Trainer, clinical hypnotherapy. When I started realizing that if I could help myself with this, well then I could help other people with it. When I started doing that as a part-time job, quickly I realized that I was damn good at it. It was what I wanted to do. It was what I still do. But if, with the help of Kenny Faulkner, I've created some real good courses that we can help create some real and lasting change. And we've created courses that take a couple of days, some that take a couple of weeks, but they're tailored for everyone's own individual needs. The more I went on with doing the courses, I was looking around the people I could help. And I could see that there were still people who, although we could help them, didn't really want to help themselves. And that really saddened me. Because at that time, there was a real spate of suicides within young men in this city. And there was a lot of people talking about what they should do and what they were going to do. And I was looking at another good friend of ours who's sitting here in the audience tonight, Jason Cameron. And Jason had started a thing in Bonkrana, and it was a peer support for men, to get men to talk, get men to open up with each other. And I thought it would be great if we could bring that idea to Derry. So I put it out on social media that on a Wednesday evening it would be in the Sandwich Company, Fisher Street in Derry, if anyone wanted to drop in just for a chat. And thankfully, a year and a half later, it's still going, still going from strength to strength. And there's still people that are getting a lot from it. So why do I say that none of this works? Well, because it doesn't. Personal development doesn't work. Hypnotherapy doesn't work. NLP doesn't. It's you that makes it work. Whenever you take action, the rest of it is all words, instructions. But unless you take it and run with it and make something with it, then that's all it'll ever be. It'll all only be words. So whenever you learn something in here tonight from any other speaker, don't just go away and say, that was a good idea. I might just do that. Just do it. Take action. How many people here, if I could tell them how to work less hours 
to earn more money would want to know. How many people would want to know that now? I'll be sitting in that corner. Pick some action. Come over and talk to me. <laughs>